Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, electric science, exoplanets, and more today. You might notice a bright crackling region on the right side heading towards the limb. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com where we find the last day on our star was still very, very quiet. And so is the solar wind at Earth, still awaiting any kind of intensification from these coronal holes we see peppered around the disk. Let's come down to the photosphere where we see indeed that some tiny sunspots tried to surge to life yesterday, but sort of half failed to do so, never got any flaring going and are heading out of view today. In ionized helium, we see that both the bright point on the right is there from the opening sequence, but also we see the filamentary motion and activity as well, all minor. Largest earthquake of the last day was a 6.3 in the northwest Pacific, been above average quaking for a few days in a row. Our first science article today implicates the tides and earthquake stress, not only the weight distribution, but the building up and sliding out and collisional breakage at the fault zones. Quick note, yesterday we looked at the heartbeat of the sun, the two to three minute oscillation at the photosphere, and it happens to be confirmed that some of those photospheric processes are causing the same scale oscillation in the chromosphere. Nice how that worked out one day after another. And with that, I wanted to share a decent space weather article on Axios. If it doesn't look like this when you get to the site, they've updated like they do every Tuesday. Just go back to June 18th. Some good summaries and experts interviewed. And if you are new here, it's critical you understand that every 250 to 300 years or so, the sun does something that would throw us back into the Stone Age. It's been about 260 years since the last one. And before this, we didn't really have any way to be thrown back into the Stone Age. No electricity, but we've got it now. Some fun stories here today. First, the push to search for life in the ocean worlds of this solar system is ramping up, but not just at the ones you'd expect like Enceladus, Titan, and Europa. How about Triton? The moon of Neptune is on the list. And Pluto, too small to fit relevantly in this photo, but indeed they believe it has a subsurface ocean as well. Curiosity at Mars just detected the highest methane readings yet. This puts even more weirdness into some of the lack of methane detections from satellite. In terms of planetary nebula progenitors, stars going nova in a small way and shedding their shells, they just found the largest such example out of Hong Kong University. Sadly, doesn't really make for great photos. Last but not least, the paper that will consume my day today, understanding in more detail, the demonstration that amplitude of an external electric field is linearly tied to the condensation rate of water droplets. This has implications for rain, clouds, lightning, and hail, and that's just in our atmosphere, let alone the cosmos. It also explains the extreme events during solar storm-driven electric field changes in the atmosphere, when the most extreme weather tends to take place. Authors are keen to make sure we understand that the water molecule polarization is a huge factor in the electrocondensation mechanistic action they describe. Yeah, we got that. Awesome paper, guys. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.